اهلا وسهلا فيكم من جديد ومننتقل الى الندوه الثالثه تحت عنوان تاثير الالعاب الالكترونيه على المراهقين اونلاين جيمنج اند اتس افكتس اون تين انجرز مدعي الى المنصه كام ادر دكتور نظير حاوي دكتور جوردن شابيرو ايضا وبدير هالجلسه دكتور مايا سميحه استاذه محاضره بجامعه الانديو خليني بس ذكركم بتويتس اللي لازم تعملون على تويتر الاكونت اللي شايفينه قدامكم هيدا الهاشتاج وافضل تويت بالاخر رح بيكون فيه كمان جوائز مقدمين من المؤسسه خليني اقول اكثر من ذلك ايضا وعود وذكر باهم داعم لهذا المؤتمر والداعم المستمر للمؤتمرات اللي بتقوم فيهم مؤسسه ميشيديا فريدريتش ايبرت الدعم المستمر شكرا للرعاة وشكرا للداعمين خلينا بس كرمال الوقت من هلا هيدي البانل من هلا للساعه 3 على الأد تنقدر ما يكون عندنا تاخير على انتهاء المؤتمر فمن هلا للساعه 3 بترككم مع دكتور مايا وبنرجع من بعدها بنستانف اخر بانل وتوصيات والختام شكرا تفضل يا ليلي I am honored to be moderating the panel about this extremely relevant topic. Thank you, Dr. Maishidia. You are, as always, a role model for all of us. Today, online gaming is almost dominating the world, especially our children's mind. The global gaming industry has surpassed $100 billion in 2018 with an estimated 2.5 billion active video gamers. Also, although online gaming is great entertainment, gaming addiction is on its way to become officially recognized as a mental disorder by the WHO, by the World Health Organization and the American Association of Psychiatrists. Asking the younger audience today with us, how many of you play PUBG, uh, Call of Duty, Overwatch? But we have more parents. <laughs> Asking the parents, how many of you have children or grandchildren right now at home playing Fortnite on this Saturday? Oh, so especially it's uh, no homework now. We will tackle the benefit and risk of online gaming and its impacts on our children's minds with our esteemed panelists who are pioneers in this field. Please join me in welcoming first Dr. J Jordan Shapiro, globally celebrated public intellectual. <laughs> He's currently a senior fellow at Sesame Workshop non-resident fellow at Brookings Institution, and he teaches at the University of Temple. Next, Mr. Cam Adair is founder. He's an internationally recognized speaker, entrepreneur, and YouTuber. He's the founder of Game Quitter, the world's largest support co community for video game addiction, serving members in 90, 92 countries. <laughs> Our final panelist, Dr. Nazir Hawi, associate professor at NDU. Most of his research, he has over 20 publications in the last couple of years just about internet addiction, smartphone addiction, video game addiction, published in the most prestigious international uh, uh, journals. He also founded, he, he also found the founder and president of LARA, an NGO dedicated to awareness and rehabilitation from technology addiction. Please, please allow me to start with a video prepared uh, for NDU INTA initiative, an initiative about internet addiction. This will be an introduction of the subject. The video. بحزيران 2018 منظمة الصحة العالمية صنفت الإدمان على الفيديو جيم حالة مرضية نفسية حياة الاجتماعي جيمينج علاقات جيمينج ما بعرف شيء خارج الجيمينج 
بيتروق هو عم يحضر التلفزيون قبل ما يجي الاوتوكار ياخده وبس يرجع دغري بيوصل وبدور التلفزيون ايباد بي اس 4 موفيز على نتفليكس تليفون طالما هن قاعدين بالبيت طالما بيستعملوا التكنولوجيا الانتليجنسيا استراتا بلبنان رايحه على الاضمحلال خطوره هذا الموضوع على المجتمع لقدام كثير كبيره وهذا شيء بده معالجه فوريه سنة 2008 حبيت أعمل بحث علمي بخصوص وسائل التكنولوجيا الحديثة وتأثيرها على الأولاد طلبت إذن من وزارة التربية يسمحوا للبحث يفوت على المدارس الرسمية والخاصة من سبع سنين أخذت قرار أني أرجع مع عائلتي على لبنان تفاجأت بالتغيير القوي اللي صار بمجتمعنا مثلا كانت الفرحه الكبيره يروحوا الاولاد عند تيتا وجده اليوم بتقولوا للولد بدنا نروح في واي فاي لا بتجر هونيك شو بدي اعمل يوم ولد تحت ثلاث سنين ما بقى يعرفوا ياكلوا اذا ما عم يحضروا يوتيوب فوت على الصف قبل ما تبلش الحصه بلاقي كل هالتلاميذ حاطين راسهم بالسلولار ما حدا عم يحكي مع الثاني لكل هالاسباب حسيت انه لازم بلش حول ابحاثي لتصير عن هذا الموضوع سنه 2012 قدرت انشر اول بحث علمي بلبنان والعالم العربي شفت حجم المشكله بلبنان وهون كان اللقاء مع الدكتوره مايا سماحه روبرت اللي اظهرت اهتمامها بالموضوع بسنه 2013 بلشنا اول دراسه فتنا فيها على 13 ألف بيت بجميع المناطق اللبنانية للفئة العمرية بين 7 و 11 سنة وتبيننا 91% من الأولاد عم بيقضوا أكثر من الوقت موصى عليه من المؤسسات العالمية يلي يعني هو أكثر من ساعتين إذا أنا فليت هن قاعدين على التكنولوجيا يعني ما عندهم غير تسلية بيتسلوا فيها عن جد مزبوط هن لوحدهم 40% من الأهل عم يستعملوا الشاشة حضانة للأطفال أنا بالنسبة لإلي It's a tool تتهين لي حياتي التكنولوجيا والسمارت فون والفيديو جيم صار المحور الأساسي بتربية الأهل للأولاد هيدي الزهرة عطيناها مصطلح اسمه E-Discipline واليوم بالعالم عم يستعملوا لهيدا المصطلح إذا الواحد بيتركن على راحتهم أكيد بيجيبوا معهم الأيباد وأكيد بيكلوا بالقوات ممنوع التكنولوجيا على الطاولة اضطرينا نعملها قانون اكتشفنا مبدا الطفل المدمن هيدا شيء ما كنا عم نسمع فيه بمجتمعنا اكتشفنا مبدا ثاني اسمه الام فاكتور من خلاله شفنا انه احتمال تفوق الاولاد بالمدارس والجامعات صار عم يضمحل يعني احتمال انه ذكر بيستعمل التكنولوجيا هو عم يدرس بنسميها مالتي تاسكينج يتفوق على الاخرين من نفس الفئة العمرية بتقل 19 مرة حزوزه بتقل 19 مرة أما بفئة الإناس بتقل حزوزهم 8 مرات قررنا نكفي على عدة فئات عمرية بينا 82% من الصبيان المراهقين أعمارهم بين 13 و 17 سنة عم يستعملوا هول الألعاب يلي هي مفروض تكون لفوق 18 سنة 92% عم بفوتوا على مواقع مش مسموح يفوتوا فيها المراهقين اليوم عم بيقضوا أربع ساعات من ال 14 ساعة بالنهار على فيديو جيمز في أولاد تبين معنا عم بفيقوا بالليل ليكملوا لعب ليحافظوا على المستويات اللي وصلوا لها خلال النهار هيدا على حساب صحتهم النفسية والعقلية والجسدية إذا ظهرت من البيت سيقبت أو شيء بيتخربط هيدا وقت النوم لأنه الأولاد عم تلعب على الجو إلكترونيك وما بتحترم وقت النوم بضل بدهم اكثر واكثر واكثر كل ما زاد الادمان على سمارت فون عم تتضاعف خمس مرات مستويات القلق عند الاولاد وكمان عم بتضاعف التشنج بالعلاقات الاسريه 13 مره بندعي ناس لتستعمل التكنولوجيا بشكل متوازن ومنتج اليوم نحن كاهل دورنا صار اكبر بكثير واصعب بكثير من الدور اللي قاموا فيه اهلنا معنا لانه اليوم نحن بدنا نحارب عمالقه التكنولوجيا ما تحولوا بيتكم لاوتيل ولا تتحولوا انتم لمانجرز بهالاوتيل ولا تخلوا اولادكم ضيوف حاجزين غرفه ابديه بهالاوتيل نتمنى عليكم انه تحافظوا على القيم والمبادئ 
الأساسية لحتى تبقى عندكم عيالكم مترابطة متواصلة بهالزمن الرقم اللي نحن عايشين فيه لو انه الواحد ما بيتقبلها وبده ينكرها بس انا اكيد انه الحياه بالعائله منا مثل ما هي مفروض تكون يعني كل واحد وحده بالعالم تبعوله ما ممكن ياكلوا الا اذا حطيتهم على اليوتيوب بزعل شوي انه ما بنقعد بناكل بالمطبخ كلنا سوا هيك مثل ما كنا بالزمنات وقت كنت انا صغيره وهذه يعني ون اوف ماي بيست ميموريز بشوف حدا ما بشوف اهلي اهلي انه بفكروا عم بلعب قمر بعتقد او عم بتقاطع انا بلشت العب فيديو جيمز كان عمري صوب بالست سبع سنين احلى شيء عملته بحياتي على الجيمنج كل مصروف على الجيمنج انا حياتي الاجتماعيه جيمنج علاقاتي جيمنج ما بعرف شيء خارج الجيمنج انا اصحاب عندي من ورا الجيمنج للصراحه فيهم نلعب سوا انا بروجرامي من الصبح للصراحه بجرب ما في نمله الساعه 11 لأنه الجيمنج لونج في لبنان بيفتحوا الساعة 12 من الساعة 12 للساعة 6 وجه الضو بكون بالجيمنج لونج والساعة 6 برجع على البيت بدور البي اس وبلعب لحديت مع اخفا أنا صرت بخمس سنين بالجامعة ناجح كورس واحد بالخمس سنين عايد 15 كورس كثير صعبة غير حياتي ما في كثير بحبها كثير 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 بحبها من قلبي ما في غير ما في ما في تغير لا لا ما بعرف قد من الجمهور الكريم في ناس عايشين مش لهالدرجه بس عايشين هيدي الحاله ببيوتهم مع اولادهم اولاد اولادهم اي سبيت تو شير انجلش اي جست اسك اف اني وان هير اور هاو ماني دو ايدنتيفاي ويز وات واز ان ذس فيديو كان بليز ليت مي ستارت ويز يو وود يو شير ويز اس يور بيرسونال ستراجل ويز اديكشن with gaming addiction? Yeah, absolutely, and I'm so honored to be here. It's my first time in Lebanon, so thank you for having me. My work in this area began through my own personal journey. So I was addicted to playing video games for about 10 years. That caused me to drop out of high school, never graduate, and while all my friends were off to college, I was gaming up to 16 hours a day. I was very depressed, I was very anxious, and of course my parents said, if you don't go to school, then you have to get a job. And so I started to pretend to have jobs and deceive my family. And as much as gaming allowed me to escape, it didn't actually fix anything. And so I got to a point where I wrote a suicide note, and that was the night where I realized I needed to make a change. And that change for me began by quitting gaming. Eventually, I ended up relapsing after two years. And it was during that relapse where I went from not gaming for two years to gaming 16 hours a day for five months straight that I stepped back and really thought, what is it about these games that I'm so drawn to? Why am I playing them so much? And how do I go from not gaming for two years to gaming 16 hours a day, literally overnight? And I just realized that I was gaming for specific reasons to fulfill different emotional needs I had, and that really helped me be able to move forward. And today, the community I run helps about 50,000 people a month in 94 countries around the world who are all coming forward themselves saying, I too struggle with gaming and I want help and I want to move forward. And it's just been really profound for me to see all these young people coming forward asking for help. And just for this conversation, I think it's really important that we understand that for some people, they play and they may struggle like myself. And for others, the vast majority of people who play, they're completely fine. And I'm just a big believer in if people are coming forward and they need help, then we should respond by saying, how can we help? And for everyone else, we should allow them to game in peace. Nazir, please. Would you tell us what are the signs that parents should be looking for, uh, watch for, for uh, signs of gaming addiction? Okay, first, uh, please allow me to uh, thank Her Excellency Dr. May Shidya for giving <laughs> us. <laughs> for giving us uh, this. Op <laughs> to give us uh, this uh, opportunity to disseminate uh, knowledge to everyone uh, regarding online uh, gaming, and uh, thank you. Uh, actually, uh, there are uh, several symptoms that uh, parents can uh, identify with their children had they been uh, 
considered uh, you know, addicts to online gaming. The first one is being occupied the whole time with gaming before the gaming session and after the gaming session. So uh, the whole time the gaming issue is occupying their mind. This is one of them. And uh, the other one is that with time, they start building tolerance in order to gain the same uh, quantity, if you want, of excitement. So half an hour at the beginning is enough, then uh, it won't be enough for long, and uh, now they need another half an hour in addition to the other one. So with time, they build tolerance to play, and we were able, actually, in our study, to uh, <coughs> determine that uh, uh, addicts to online gaming were uh, playing uh, double or triple the number of hours of those who are considered casual, uh, casual gamers. So there are actually several uh, symptoms that parents can rely on. One of them is to uh, lie about their uh, gaming. Had it been something uh, correct, why should children lie about it? So usually they lie about when they are gaming, about uh, which games they are playing, and uh, for how long they are gaming. So in this uh, case, uh, parents mainly should uh, look for uh, uh, you know, physical, psychological health issues and uh, to social functioning, something wrong with the social functioning of the child. Had this, uh, could this be related to online gaming? Then here, uh, parents should uh, intervene. Well, Jordan, I would like to hear your thoughts about what is a play as you are an advocate of learning through gameplay. Yeah, well, first, I also want to want to thank you for the invitation and thank all of you for being so welcoming. On that, we all agree. Um, the, uh, uh, and when I watch this video, I, I, I can feel so deeply the, the, the struggle that so many people are, go are going through. And there are certainly a ton of people, uh, and, you, and I hear these stories everywhere I go around the world. Um, and there are a ton of people who have very unhealthy relationships with video games. Very, a ton of people have very unhealthy relationships with, uh, with digital devices in general. Grown-ups, kids, teenagers, er er everything. Um, um, but but I, I, from my perspective, I tend to want to separate that from whether or not game, that's because of the games or not, right? Uh, we have very unhealthy relationships with many things. I, I know people who have unhealthy relationships with food. I know people who have unhealthy relationships with sex and with love and with uh, and religion and with money and with work. Unhealthy relationships people tend to do. And we really need to work as a society to figure out how do we manage one, those unhealthy relationships, but also how do we raise our children in such a way that they don't develop those relation, unhealthy relationships to begin with. And so uh, what, what really excites me is that I, I think there's an enormous potential in games, right? I, all morning I've been listening to all the fantastic panels and we talked about how the way the world is connected is changing the world order. We talked about digital economy. We did all this stuff that's all about the new kinds of connections and technologies that are shaping our world. And here we have this thing that's shaping our kids' worlds. Um, and I, we really need to think about it and, and not just think of it as good or bad. Now, what we know in child development is that the best way to learn almost all of the social skills, all of the emotional skills, all of the executive function, all of the self-regulation skills, so many of the things that we now know are what create uh, academic success, professional success, those things are best developed through play, right? Um, so when you think about little kids, uh, very little kids playing just a normal game of ball, for example, there are certain rules. They learn how to interact. They learn how to follow those rules. They learn how to interact with each other. Sometimes they get in fights. If you and I get in a fight playing ball, I learn very quickly how to, how to mediate that fight as a little kid, and that's very important for social interaction. So I think the first big benefit of gaming, if we can figure out how to get it healthily integrated into our kids' lives is that they'll learn how to socialize in a digital connected world way better than most of us adults are doing. I mean, we're not very good at it as adults yet, right? So I would hope the kids grow up to be better with their devices than I am, right? But that means they're going to have to do that through play and they're certainly going to have to do it through parents uh, telling them, you know, 
dinner time is not the time to watch YouTube, right? <laughs> they have to learn that. It's not the, if I were sitting here looking at YouTube right now while we were talking, you'd all think I was crazy, right? Um, so we need to teach that to our kids very, very young in order to get rid of the kinds of unhealthy relationships that both, both of these speakers are, are talking about. Yeah, but with Fortnite and PUBG, it, could it be any like uh, learning through gaming? This is what our sons are playing, you know? <laughs> Cam, you have something? <laughs> I think there's a d distinct difference now between what games have been and, and what games are today. And, you know, for some people in here, you may be familiar with games like Pong and Tetris and the classics. You know, I'm 30 and the games I played growing up were Counter-Strike and World of Warcraft and those games, even before that, you know, they had a very clear start and end. And now games are very different. The gambling and gaming industries are intersecting very quickly. Revenue models for games have completely changed in the last 10 to 15 years where now there's a lot of initiatives to see how can we get people to spend as much money within games as possible. Games are no longer a $50 purchase one time. They're free and then you're able to buy cosmetic upgrades within the game that a lot of research is now showing is very psychologically akin to gambling. And this is being exposed to kids at a very young age. Even I have a study that just came out last week that showed games designed for preschoolers that are educational games and apps have manipulative advertising in them. And an example of that would be a six-year-old is playing this game called Dr. Kids. And within the game, it's, you know, the kid is cleaning teeth and becoming a dentist. And then a pop-up comes up and it says, hello, six-year-old, would you like to buy the new game for $1.99 or buy the bundle for $3.99? And, you know, of course, on the pop-up, there's an X, a red X that you can press that I think we're all very familiar in here with how impossible that is. But if you manage to press that X, the character on the screen begins to cry. And this is an instance where this six-year-old is being taught that not spending money within the game is actually shameful and wrong. And that's very different than just playing a game of Tetris or playing a game of Pong. And I think that when we're talking about this conversation, we have to distinguish between, yes, some games are fun and they're play, and that's fantastic. And business models have changed a lot. And there's a lot of gambling-like game design coming into these games to maximize profits. And that's not necessarily healthy for our kids. We know the earlier you're exposed to gambling, the more likely you are to be a problem gambler when you're older. So I think these are some of the alarming trends that we have to pay attention to and, and understand the games have changed. Nazir, building on what Cam just said, from a computer scientist perspective, do you think giant technology are building game in a way to be addictive? Are, are they designing games to be addictive? Of course, I agree with uh, Cam because uh, we actually, humanity so far entered uh, uh, two phases. The first phase where the creator of a game was interested in selling the game on a CD or another uh, platform and then that's it. He gets his uh, box and then uh, the buyer leaves, okay, and uh, however they leave some attractions there so that they come back and purchase the next CD in the sequel. That's it. However, that phase is gone now, and it's being replaced now with, uh, as you mentioned, uh, high-tech, giant uh, tech companies that are trying now to convert the whole industry into business. So it's no more about game design. Yeah, it's, okay? it's not game design for game design. Now, uh, the game design has changed to business. Now they are trying uh, to uh, change the design of the online game, especially online gaming, uh, so that the person gets back to playing again and for longer periods, to have enough ample time to m maximize their profits. And as Cam said, there will always be there things to sell those kids. And in our study uh, that was published in 2018 recently, we were able to uh, you know, uh, find out that the younger the children, the uh, more addict to uh, online gaming they are. So here parents should play a major role by postponing as much as possible, okay, uh, making these devices available to them. So yes, I do believe that uh, uh, companies, what they are trying to do is uh, more scary 
Again. By the way, I'm not against uh, you know, playing games. Okay, I'm not against technology. I am a computer science professor at Notre Dame University, and I've been for a very long time. So uh, that is not the point. We're trying ju just sh to shed light on what businesses are trying to do through online gaming, and that is to monetize the weaknesses of those children. So uh, they are seeking the help of psychologists, of behavioral scientists, and attention engineers in order to inject into those games okay, features that allow them to maximize their profits by selling gadgets and so on. Okay. Well, Jordan, you talk about the gameplay for learning. Who is going, to, who's designing this? The, these tech companies, universities, <laughs> how we're going yeah, I want to answer that, but I want, can I respond to the, to the previous comment first? Is that okay? Sure, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because I, 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 I agree, I agree, I agree, I would say nine, 85%, right? Uh, I agree with almost everything you said, um, that, that certainly companies are, are using predatory methods. Yeah, we overlap, yeah. yeah. Uh, certainly game, game designers are using predatory methods in order to make a profit. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I think that might be a problem with consumption capitalism, not a problem with video games, right? right? Like, like most of us are all uh, involved with things that are trying to capture our, capture our, our attention. All those billboards you see are doing the exact same thing. So the th only part I disagree with you, because I think these are problematic and I think they're predatory, yeah. where I disagree with you is our job as parents might be to introduce our kids earlier so that we teach them how to better manage an in, a, a world of commerce that's trying to constantly manipulate you into Feeling, feeling high status, low status, right? When you tell, describe the, this picture of crying, I think, well, most of the commercials that my kids, that adults see are saying, if you don't have the right phone, you should feel shame, right? If you don't have the right clothes, you should feel shame. I think that's a ta tragedy that that's how humanity is right now. But we as parents need to teach our kids how to manage that, not go, well, why don't we pretend that's not the world until they're a, teen, until they're a certain age, and then we'll wonder why they don't know how to do it anymore. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -oh. Actually, regarding uh, billboards, TVs, the, you know, always parents were wary about having their children addicted to watching, let's say, TV. Yeah. But billboards, TVs, and other uh, media, they, uh, people there, children there, they are observers. While in the virtual world, those children are cit citizens. They become citizens of their world, and they fall into the trap of interactivity. Okay, so there is a big difference between looking at a billboard for a second, okay, while, uh, you know, as Cam mentioned earlier, while adding a feature whereby if you do not abide by purchasing this uh, thing, okay, they make you feel ashamed of yourself, okay? So they are playing on the weakness of the child. Well. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time. I want to leave uh, some room for questions, but uh, we know Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, and today we're just reading about the Silicon Valley big tech parents are delaying as much as possible uh, giving technology to their children. Uh, Cam, I want to, to end up wrapping with uh, the one big advice we give to parents, what should we do with, from each of our panelists? How at Game Quitters, what is it the one advice that will stick in our head to do? Technology, Technology needs to be used from a creation instead of a consumption standpoint, and I think when we're using technology to build apps and to learn computer science and to be really engaged in it, to actually create something for the world, I think that's where technology is used best instead of just as a way to watch more cat videos on YouTube or to post more selfies on Instagram. I think it's all about how you use the technology and, and ultimately coming from that creation standpoint. And I do believe, you know, just like Jordan said, that this 
has a big component of parenting involved. It's not the whole story, but it's an aspect of it. And I believe that we really need to get back to focusing on the family unit. So creating sacred time where there's you know, no technology at the dinner table and you're going on hikes and getting back in nature as a family. Those are very important components. But rebuilding the family unit is probably one of, if not the biggest things that you can do to make sure that kids are not getting addicted to technology. So Jordan, the one, so let's say your one thing is no uh, technology during dinner time. <laughs> uh, or with me. <laughs> and what advice you would give to parents? We're looking forward for your new book. Uh, uh, my, my, my advice to parents would be play video games with your kids uh, and talk to your kids about what's going on with the video games and have conversations when those pop-ups come to explain how they work and explain that they are predators, right? And make kids understand why you're saying no. Um, because when, if, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, when my, kid, when my parents said no, I said, how am I gonna go do it, right? Uh, so the best thing, that, uh, that if we really wanna teach our kids to responsibly interact with technology, we need to get down and dirty and do it with them. Then we can start to avoid some of these things. Then we can teach them to be afraid of exactly the kinds of things that you're both pointing out. Um, but but that, that's about uh, grown-ups taking the responsibility um, for, for, for stopping that. I wish there were a way to stop the games from having predatory things. Hopefully, maybe we will have legislation that makes that possible, but, but until that happens, then I, I think we really, parents need to get involved, play with their kids, teach their kids how to think about the games, how to make sense of, uh, of the games, and how to behave ethically around gaming, and responsi responsible around gaming, and to live a fulfilled life while also playing games. Nazir, you have one advice, yeah. parenting, you know, because obviously our role as parents has did grow a lot, like we have to do a lot more for our kids. Yeah, actually I do agree here with uh, Jordan uh, that uh, uh, parents should actually educate themselves about online gaming and video games in, in general. So they need to educate themselves about, they can't avoid it. However, to play with them is a major issue because I've been observing several fathers playing with their sons uh, video gaming, leaving the job over the mother to become even harder to stop the whole family from uh, playing. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know, I mean, I won't give this uh, any, anyway. So I, it's a total, <laughs> sorry for this. Anyway, this is it. So parents first should educate themselves really about uh, online gaming, video gaming, and they need to set rules at home, okay? Very clear ru uh, rules, such as, let's say, no more than two hours of, let's say, at that certain age. Plus, they need the consistency, so they need to enforce those uh, rules. It's not up to that child to decide what should happen at home or not, okay? If you give the device to your child, the whole time, it's as if you have a closet of alcohol at home, allowing the child to drink from that closet of alcohol as much as they want, okay, whatever type of alcohol you have available there and at any time. I mean, the device gives total freedom to the child and I don't think at this age, especially, you know, we are accustomed now in Lebanon, it's becoming trendy, to give the device as a gift to the child at a year, at age seven. I don't know if you agree with me or not. So at age seven, the parents, because they love their child, they love their child, okay, so they give them the device at year seven, at age seven, and this Even is less. not appropriate. Here, I agree with uh, Jordan that parents, before they do this, they need to educate themselves because they are uh, today falling into a transitionary period they weren't trained to uh, deal with this issue, okay? But now it's the time because they need to train themselves so that now they train their children. We are living in a different digital, we are living in a digital age completely different than the previous one. So we need to put that effort. Uh, okay, I have to open for questions <laughs> because we only have 10 minutes l uh, left. Any questions from the audience? Okay. Oh, lots of questions. Lots of questions. Yeah. Microphone. I'm just going to go there. Any ladies first? Ladies. No. No, I'm going to
afectación. Lala, I am a psychoeducator, and when we talk about intelligence and how to increase it, we always say that children should learn through their senses, and not only visually, okay? So, to build a perception of the concepts, they should manipulate things, and not only play with. Play is supposed to be done through toys first. Even at seven years, they need toys, and they need also to release their energy. By sitting hours and hours, they are becoming hyperactive, okay? They cannot really connect, and they cannot concentrate. So how are we going to build a new generation that really is not uh, uh, somehow uh, interact, interacting with their surrounding socially or uh, even uh, at school, okay? I would address this question to Jordan. Please yeah. may you answer. Um, it's, a, it's a really long, long answer, but I'll try to do it as, as, qui as quickly as I can. Um, yes, absolutely. I, I, I agree with, with many of the things that, that, that you've said, um, but I want to point out that we often think about when we say, um, when, we, when we talk about both play for learning and learning play for sake and even sensory learning, we think about that as something that's very sort of neutral, as if the way we've done, we know it the most uh, is the is the right way? All of those things are actually interactions with tools, right? Um, right? And and this is a kind of tool, and this is a tool they also need to play and get in their senses to learn how to do. No, they should not do it for, as the only thing they do for 14 hours a day. Um, my my rule with my own children has always been actually there's I don't put a limit on how many hours they can play. Instead, I put a requirement on all the other things they must do. Like you must be spend some time outside. You must spend some time talking to friends. You must spend some time reading books. It's kind of impossible to play all day and then also do all the thing, other things you have to. So, so I do it sort of without making it so negative. But they ne also need the time to learn how to interact in a connected digital space. Uh, both of the, both of the, all of these things are important, especially as we move into a world. Because again, if you think about all the panels we've heard all day so far, the way we're going to address all of those problems is by raising a generation of kids who are better equipped to behave ethically in a connected world than we are. Because we're not that, again, we're not doing it that well. So how do we prepare kids that are able to do it? That means they need a lot of practice and a lot of mentorship in order to live that ethical life and to, and to present it. Who's going to come up with these legislative solutions? It's going to be the next generation who really understands it well enough. They're not going to understand it if they don't have time to play in it. Um, but yes, I agree. Not just play in it. Play other ways too. Well, some, some kids are doing it at school. That's very divided by socioeconomic class. I mean, it's not true that they're, they're, the majority of the world is not using technology at, at school right now. Somehow teaching the students to, to how to function or how to use them. So what we need more is to teach the child that this item is good for half an hour, one hour a day, not more. And the rest of the time he has to socialize, go outside, see people, see friends, and uh, live with his family. I, I think you and I are in complete agreement uh, that grown-ups need to decide what we think is the appropriate way to do it and to teach kids how to do it. I don't know if you and I agree on the exact times, but we certainly agree that grown-ups need to be creating a healthy relationship for kids around this. Yeah. Okay. Um, sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to speak in Arabic and in English as well because uh, this is a suggestion in Muqtarah from the Mayshidya conference. It's, a, it's an initiative to be uh, announced through this uh, great conference is to liaise between the study that you did, which is you as, as an NDU, and you're saying it's Idman. You're saying this is addiction. So this is a very serious word. Uh, and to liaise with the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of uh, Media and Communication and see how can you educate uh, this, uh, the gaming, the, the digital, all this in the schools.
Because if you, we're gonna keep on saying, okay, this is the study that we did, and this is the complaint, the parents cannot do it by themselves, and the kids cannot do it by themselves. There should be somewhere uh, in Tila'a, uh, yeah. uh, from, 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 uh, from somewhere, to start to kick it off. And for you, since you have initiating this, and to, to be minbar, minhal mu'tamar, to be as muqtarah, yunafaz, and to, to work on it with the Ministry of Education because this has to be taught in the schools to educate the kids. Because if, I, if I'm a mother, I would keep on telling, I'm gonna fight with my son, only one hour, two hours, and I'm like a police in the house. I am literally yeah, a police yeah. in the house. <laughs> so, but we need this, the coordination from the schools and with the parents. But you need an authority to lead it. You yeah. cannot just leave it open like this. Thank you. We Hello. most certainly welcome. I think one of the biggest opportunities to integrate that is through esports. So esports is organized professional gaming, and currently it's about a billion dollar industry. It's more professional people making money doing that, but in Australia and the US right now, by next year there will be organized leagues across high school and college level. And very soon, within 24 to 36 months, this will be worldwide. Uh, and may, sorry, can may you explain to the audience what are esports? So it's like playing football, where you have organized teams, high school, through schools or through different organizations, through the college, where people are able to get scholarships to go to college for the sport, which in this case is playing video games. So it's organized, different games have different rules. But one of the biggest opportunities we have is, as this comes in and is integrated into our schools and integrated into our colleges, universities, is to integrate an aspect of, of prevention work into it. So, you know, I'm really big now on, you know, every esports player having a well-being handbook. And if a school, high school, college has an esports team, there should be a requirement that there is prevention programming done at the beginning of the school year around helping students understand warning signs and understand, you know, how to keep their relationship with technology to be healthy. And I speak at schools all over the world who have iPads integrated into the classroom and I hear a lot of problems from the, the staff talking about how challenging that is to navigate. And so if a school has iPads as a huge part of the education system, there should also be the counterbalance of having prevention work done in the school and just helping students become more aware of their use. And what's always left me feeling really optimistic about the work that I do is when students or gamers are educated on why they play and what needs it fulfills and what some of the warning signs are, and how to balance out their, their activities, they always are able to respond in a really powerful way, regardless of whether they have an addiction where it's you know, causing significant impairment or they're playing in a healthy way. But bringing a greater sense of awareness as to why gives them a huge opportunity to leverage that into balancing and keeping a healthy relationship. So I do believe you know, the prevention is huge, but prevention is really boring. And we live in a society that we care about things when there's a crisis. And we need to find a way to make prevention what I would describe as sexy, which is you know, for schools to see why it's so important to have that in there and, and just making prevention more accessible for everyone. Well, here it's just worth mentioning that France just banned the use of digital devices in school uh, for, uh, for l'école élémentaire et primaire. So students are not allowed to take uh, uh, phone, smartphone, or use tablets in the school in France starting September 2018. Uh, Just uh, to elaborate more on the idea of getting the help of the Ministry of Education, regarding our uh, study, uh, the participants were mainly from grades 10, 11, and 12. So they are secondary school uh, students and the uh, uh, prevalence rate that we were able to identify was 9.2%. So 9.2% of the children could be classified as having the internet gaming disorder, and 35.7% were at risk of becoming. So those numbers uh, uh, had generalization been warranted here, uh, taking into consideration that there are uh, about 132,000 uh, secondary school students in Lebanon, imagine that there are there uh, a group of about 
12,000 children that need help, okay? And about 47,000 that are ready to become addict. So I'm not saying that this, let's say, uh, the research that should be, th that we all should base our thinking about it, but there should be more, okay? But yes, it's kind of an alarm, alarm raising the alarm. But, uh, okay, and we will follow with MCF on this. I promise you. And yeah, I'm answering the lady. <laughs> okay, who's next, Philippe? You had a question? Oh, okay, oh, okay, sorry. On today's generation, and we, all of here attending the conference, we try. We have tried the online gaming, and we're not addicted. And the children who are addicted to online gaming, of course, they have some problem. Don't you think parents should face this problem with them before telling them ab about the disadvantages of online gaming? Because we cannot. It's a place to run away of, uh, from their reality, and that's the point that we should fix on it. Maybe I take two or three questions and then. Uh, Nas, uh, yeah, na yes. One, we actually, uh, we've been uh, raising awareness for a long time now uh, and through the uh, CNRS uh, Lebanon and through NDU and now through uh, Dia Foundation, uh, we are saying that uh, parents, uh, they have a major role here. We just mentioned that they should educate themselves so that they know how to address the issue. It's not about just getting the device from their child and stopping them abruptly from using it. This will raise a big psychological problem and a clash at home. We don't advise you to do this. Good afternoon. And, and with Lara. Uh, good afternoon. Maybe I will talk uh, a little. Okay, maybe I will uh, talk a little bit uh, in English uh, and uh, in Arabic. Uh, I want to explain uh, something. I have a child uh, uh, age 14. Uh, so you are talking about uh, ch uh, children uh, from uh, uh, 12 and uh, above, but, uh, but the problem start, I think, uh, on 12 years old, to become uh, more, uh, uh, more uh, dangerous, uh, okay, after, uh, after this. And uh, I think, uh, I think uh, games and uh, all media, Insta or WhatsApp or whatever, uh, start to be, uh, to become a stage in the, in the rules of the life of the adolescents uh, regarding uh, regardless of uh, parents uh, of parents behavior يعني لو الأهل ملاحقين لولادهم مش بالضرورة يكونوا هن مقصرين تجاه ولادهم يعني لو معين ولو etc عم بيوصل لوقت إنه الولاد اللي من هيدا العمر عم بيكونوا متعلقين بكل شيء اسمه وسائل اتصال وميديا وهيدا الشيء عم بيشكل عليه خطر بحجة إنه في شيء عم بيعملوه رشاش للمدرسة لازم يضلوا فيه بإيديهم ديفايس وغير إشياء أوكي هيدا الشيء بتصور عم بيعينوا منه كتير ناس وهالشيء كمان عم بيخليهم إنه بين الجيم أدكتيف وبين غير إشياء يوصلوا يمكن لمطارح عم بيأذوا حالهم أو حتى أنه no. Okay. I will uh, just Sorry. sum it up quickly for Sorry, them. Uh, okay. uh, 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 so, uh, 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 عم بيكون في خطر أكثر لأن الولاد عم بيكونوا متمكنين هيدا يعني ولادي أنا ما كانوا قبل أدكتيف وعندي هلا هلا عمري اللي أربعة عشر سنة صارت كتير أدكتيف عم تتع عم تتعامل بطريقة إنه أول شيء ببروجيات مدرسة وتترى بعدين عم بيصير في خطر على الموضوع يعني بين الاتصال بين الولاد بين بعضهم بالمدارس عاسس درس بيرجعوا بيفوتوا بيعملوا رشاش بيفوتوا على جيم بيشتركوا سوا 
عم بتصير القصة عم بتطول وتطول وتاخد من وقتهم ومن صحتهم على حساب أكلهم على حساب أدويتهم على حساب كل شيء وعم بيتراجعوا يعني وقت اللي بيكونوا مويان ديزويت أو أو ديسات عم بيصيروا بال ما بعرف قديش يمكن لل11 للأقل أو أقل أو ما عم بيدرسوا أو ما عم بيروحوا على المدرسة هيدا الشيء بفتكر مش لوحدة عم بعيني منه في كثير ناس يعني عم بحكي باسمهم وبقترح دكتور نزير ما بعرف شو عندك توصيات او ينشغل على هالموضوع بامرجنسي بالنسبه لوزاره ما بعرف اي وزاره <تصفيق> رح تهتم في هذا الموضوع اوكي ثانك يو ثانك يو طولت اي اي كان اي ايدنتيفاي وذ يو اي هاف ا 14 ييرز اولد سان اي ام شور ناو اي ماي هازبند تولد مي هيز بلاينج فورتنايت لايك اي ام نوت هوم سو اي نو توداي اول داي هيز بلاينج فورتنايت And your role as a mother, I know what you're trying to say. You're trying all your best. This is my cause. I work for it with passion, but I cannot stop my kids yes, from playing. Yes, sure. There is something to the peer pressure. Fortnite. At 14, 12, 13. كلهم بالمدرسة هيدا هو this is their only conversation. ذات الشيء حضرتك عندك بنت obviously you have a daughter social media she, ha- she has to keep up youtube instagram she has to watch the latest post or she will be left behind exactly. Exactly. there is that peer pressure social peer oh, pressure oh, if, oh, if and, so and يعني. you cannot They know you cannot have it. وإذا بدنا نجي للأهل بعصر اللي نحن هلا في الأهل عم بيركضوا والولاد عم بيركضوا yeah, والوقت كله عم بيركض يعني yeah. وضع الاقتصادي بفتكر كله عم بيضغط على هالأشياء كلها يعني الأهل ما بقى يمكن عم بيعطوا غير وقت صغير لأولادهم بعتذر يمكن طولت yeah. عليكم yeah. بس بفتكر yeah. لازم يمكن ينعمل yeah. شيء كثير مهم بهيدا الموضوع. ثانك يو. اوكي. Okay. Do you want me to repeat some? No, ideas? no, it's okay, it's okay. Philippe, you have something, and then we will have to wrap up. Just to change the mood, I, Dr. Shapiro, I think you said that we have to, to let the parents play with their kids. So I've been struggling for the last four years to convince my father to use WhatsApp. So uh, <laughs> good luck with that. So I will try to teach him maybe to play Pokemon Go as a first step. But you know, the problem here is I, I want to congratulate the LDU professors here And of course, Dr. mentioned, yeah, for raising this topic because I myself, I'm a teacher, I'm a social media teacher, and I, and I have a whole chapter on security and online games because, you know, for example, one game is the addictive one, the blue whale. We didn't talk about it here, but it all has to do with, the, with you know, with the parents because we have to monitor the behavior of our children. I think... The problem here is we cannot blame the parents because they belong to another, to a different generation. I've been myself giving like uh, awareness campaigns in churches in Lebanon, telling people you have to monitor your children. And they say, they, they, you know, they, they play games on us so they, we don't know what's in their phones, you know. And this is a, a major problem, not only online games, but also, you know, like applications, like, you know, WhatsApp, like uh, encrypted messaging, and ISIS managed to recruit people using these stuff. So I think awareness is key in this topic. I don't know if you agree on this. Yes. Hi, I just have a small suggestion. Uh, being a young adult, so I'm 22 now, I have found a solution for that issue. So I am also at risk. We, all, we are all at risk to being addicted to social media and to our phones. But my solution is maybe go to the gym, do an activity for 14 year olds, maybe they can join the scout, maybe they can do boxing, anything that could put their mind off and release energy, we should focus on sports and going out more. Alternative activities. Maybe you should go with her and have a walk. Okay. I don't know, so, so it's ca- just a suggestion. Come here, uh, what you would say to parents, I ne- really, we need to wrap up and with Jordan, Uh, Parenting is a, is a component of it. Kids get the headlines. This conversation involves parents. The majority of gaming addicts that I see are 18 to 25. So actually when they no longer have parent supervision and th- now they're in college and they have harder classwork, that tends to be where the issue actually begins to manifest. So on one hand, the parenting and being firm, having consistent boundaries is really important. And on the other hand, you have to help them identify why they're playing. So I game because it was a temporary escape. It was a social connection. 
It gave me constant measurable growth and it gave me a sense of purpose. There's a lot of research now that shows that we actually begin to identify with our online gaming characters and our gaming history. And so it's also an identity. So for parents, you, if you're trying to help them shift, you have to help them have a wider range of different activities. Gaming can't be the only thing that they're doing or online technology, computers can't be the only thing that they're doing. They have to have things where they're exercising. They have to have time in nature. You also have to help them structure their time. And I mean their free time and their holidays and their weekends. Because if you are setting restrictions during the week and then the weekend comes and it's like, go for it, well, then it's easy for them to binge. When I was playing hockey and going to school, gaming, there wasn't a lot of time for me to game excessively. But then in the summers when I had no structure, no stability, no gaming, no hockey, then it was 16 hours a day. And so just being able to monitor you know, the binging cycles is also important and help them shift to different types of games. So we know that more online multiplayer games like World of Warcraft tend to be bigger problems than games that have a start and an end. Games where you can pause and they can come for dinner instead of a game like Fortnite where if they're in the middle of their battle royale that pits them against 99 other players and you're calling them to come for dinner, if they leave that game, they lose. And that might hurt their ranking or that might hurt not just for them to lose, but all of their friends at school to lose as well because they were playing together. And so now you understand why it's World War III when you ask them to come for dinner. So even being a bit more proactive to understand what games they're playing, how these games work functionally, and maybe how long they take so that you can you know, have the foresight of dinner's gonna be in an hour, okay, play one more game of Fortnite that's gonna be 20 or 30 minutes, and then stop, come for dinner, and you can play another game afterwards. Just being able to navigate that a bit better will really help a lot. And there are parents all over the world coming together to support each other, so either on gamequitters.com or on Facebook, you can find support groups now where parents are coming together to share strategies. So I definitely encourage you to do that as well. You're not alone. Jordan, please, one last word about that healthy balance that we're looking for, the healthy balance for parents. Yeah, um, I mean, I, 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 th there's, there's two, th two, two things come, come to mind. I, I think one, just remember that there, there, there's the, 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 the single-minded focus of a 14-year-old is pretty normal, and it existed long before there were games, right? They were single-minded, and they had peer pressure about things. I didn't even have games, and I, we only talked about the things that involved peer pressure when I was 14 also. So this is a different world, yes, and I, th and I, and I agree with you, sir, that, that it's a very scary world because I think the tech industry in some ways has convinced everyone that we have no agency, that we have no, that we, we're not able to make that decision, that it's in charge, and I think we really need to learn about it as adults, and, and uh, I, th I, this won't be comforting to you, but I think it needs to start really early because I think, I think, that, I think we need to start teaching our kids those lessons, right? My kids have uh, been gaming for a very long time. Uh, uh, this is one place where I'll disagree with Cam. They don't get the, hey, wait until the game is over to come to dinner. I don't care if you die in Fortnite. You're, you're, that's not real death, right? And, but they learned that when they were four and five and six. So now that they're 14, it's not World War II because those boundaries have been set. If I had imagined if I hadn't set them, it would be World War II right now. Um, but um, cer cer certainly, um, so that's the, I think real, we really need to think about how we're gonna integrate this. It's not going anywhere. I, so we need to think about how to integrate it responsibly into our family rituals, into our family lives, and how to do it in ways where we don't get these unhealthy relationships. Sorry. Thank, thank you, Jordan. <laughs> I, I, hope, I hope this panel will give us all time to reflect on how we can save our children and their mind in this digital world. Thank you so much.